Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, welcome everyone to the Blue Chair Cafe. Thank you for choosing us over the hockey game tonight. I'm sure they're going to miss you over there. We're the house band, and uh, we're going to play a few of our favorite songs and hope that they become your favorite songs if they aren't already. How about if you give yourselves a round of applause for supporting live music? How's that? Let's, I think we should give you a round of applause. Okay. Blue Chair Cafe is a uh, restaurant and live music venue that has uh, existed in this location since 2004 and uh, we specialize in live music and food that is reminiscent of food from around the world. <laughs> I started at the very beginning um, uh, when I opened the restaurant and started working uh, with the restaurant. I needed to get the word out that the restaurant was here, and I wanted to do my my media launch because I studied journalism. Uh, after I'd, I'd quit, you know, the restaurant business for probably ten or fifteen years, I didn't mean I never even worked in one. So when I started the restaurant, I wanted to do a media launch. So I called up all my uh, newspaper buddies and said, hey, you know, come on and do a story about my new restaurant. And one of them asked me what the news angle was. And I said, well, Harold's got a new restaurant. And he said, yeah, that doesn't cut it. <laughs> I said, well, uh, we're thinking of having live music. He said, okay. <laughs> told everybody and we had the biggest media launch <laughs> I've ever seen for a restaurant. Everybody came, all the TV stations came and uh, the radio stations and the, the newspapers came and all the food writers and the music writers and everybody was here for the media launch. So then I was obligated to do music and, and it just grew from that. Starting as like a coffee house with, with uh, simple acts and local acts doing uh, you know, singer songwriter things. The room wasn't really made for it. We just sort of had a stage in the middle and the only place we could put the stage was in front of the window. That's the only place everybody in the room could see it. And it made it kind of weird that the band was sitting in front of the window. But we lived with that for about five years. And, uh, and then when we renegotiated the lease, uh, the landlord gave me the, a little bit more space and then we switched the room around. So now we have the stage in a nice corner in the back of the room. We have a green room this room behind, uh, behind the stage so the musicians can hide out and uh, you know, have a private place to be in between sets or to come in before they warm up and before they start their performance. And everybody has a good seat and everybody can see the stage. The sight lines are really good and the acoustics are phenomenal in this room. I kind of lean to the uh, to the roots music, um, acoustic music. Uh, we don't do hard rock. We don't do uh, any of those kind. Of, we do some jazz sometimes. We do uh, uh, folk music and singer songwriter music and uh, well known well known musicians who uh, 
who um, either come by themselves or with the band. The wall tells this tale um, from uh, uh, Steve Dawson was just here and uh, Gay Delorm is steady. Uh, um, gosh, I mean, I have to look at to remember all the names. There's so many. Russell, Russell DeCaro, Brent Park, and uh, Little Miss Higgins, uh, Mark Hummel, the Joe Defendants, uh, Garnet Rogers, um, Monkey Junk, uh, Tim Williams, Yarma Kokanen. Uh, there's lots of lots of big acts have been here, and lots of local ones too, and lots of local ones like, for instance, Cat Dancer, who started out doing a little songwriter set here, is now um, been nominated for a Maple Blues Award, and she's looking looking at stardom. I mean, she plays in big theaters now and travels across the country. She played here last week, played two Watch nights, and sold out both right nights. Down the track. Watch my baby ride down the track. Fading with the clickety clack. There's the wall of fame, wall of shame. <laughs> the wall of fame, the wall of shame, yeah. It keeps growing. It's just hard to keep up with putting them all up because there's so many. But we put up, I got a bunch more to put up once I get some time. I've got a stack in the office again. A lot of people come here for the food, of course, because the food is good and it's consistently good. But uh, the music is what draws them in. And we get the weekend shows that we have or, or always have. In most cases, I have to book them so that we have a good act that will fill the room. Well, there's times when I'm short. There's always days that I can't seem to find anybody, but um, there's lots of local musicians that'll take those slots if they have, if they have opportunities to do them, in most cases. You know, if I don't have a show, very seldom that we have a dark night here. I was always aware that Harold uh, was a musician as well and that uh, he had... Uh, wasn't so maybe so aware that he w had a house band that played there very often, but I became aware of it when some of my friends were starting to play uh, with him, uh, like the bass player Farley Scott, um, the uh, one of the servers Chloe Albert, who had been a great uh, McEwen graduate, who had been in a, an ensemble of mine in her second year here, and um, so the opportunity came came around to uh, do a gig with them, and I thought it might be just that one gig. I thought I was like filling in for another guy, but I became the guy, I guess, the guitar guy. Yeah, that's how it came to be, is it's mostly people that are associated with the place, right? Uh, Freddie McDougal is also a server there, and I'd never played music with her before, but, uh, but you know, now we play music together and it's super fun. Farley uh, was playing with them, and, and Farley and I, uh, uh, we've played a lot of music together over the years. We're in another band together called Billy Zizi and the Gypsy Jive. And that's a band that's been working for maybe about three years or so. Well, it, it's great. It's the best way to play music. And that venue, it's like the Yardbird Suite and both the Yardbird Suite and the, and the Blue Chair are really unique venues. Like not just in Edmonton, but unique. Uh, for any for any uh, city. If you give me wheat, whites, and wine. Yeah, it's been really nice to to watch uh, things grow there, and uh, I think in the restaurant industry and in in the industry of people that are crazy enough to have live music in their venues, because not everybody does that, right? I mean, we see. I suppose hundreds and hundreds of restaurants where, you know, they're not crazy enough to have live music because it's hard enough to run a restaurant and the profit margins are small enough that you gotta be a music lover like Harold Willen to actually, you know, go, I know, I'll build a music venue. It's a little bit tucked away in a residential area. Um, that's also part of its charm. It's it's not noisy, it's not, there's, there's parking. Um, and people in the community feel like, you know, it's their, it's their little place, which is really nice. It's just a really intimate atmosphere. Um, it's really down to earth. The people who go there are, are generally great people. And um, it's a real cozy, cozy place to be. And it's just a nice way to spend an evening and get to know people in your city. I think it gives people like me who are not 
emerging artists yet, but that want to, just sort of the, the exposure to what you could do. He gives them a, a platform, a place to start. It's, it's, a, it's a, I think, capacity approximately 80 people, so it's not a massive venue. Um, you're going to be welcomed when you play there. And like just a, be a beginning place where to start. And it's good because it's uh, all local music, so you get to see people in touch with the community. Like a lot of the people that play here will play at other places too, and we get to the community sort of, you get to know each other through. Like I've met a lot of people in the music scene through the Blue Chair, like Jamie Farley, all those people, Chloe. And then people that I meet here, I'll run into at other places. So I think it's just a good way to get in touch with the musical community. So it's really helped me in that way. I was just really lucky to be, to be able, like to get the chance to play with such talented people like Chloe, who's a musician, has her own CD, and Farley's played with all kinds of people like Katie Lang, and Harold's been in the music scene forever, and Jamie's just an amazing guitarist. So I think I just literally got lucky, and it's helping my personal music scene or skills grow. Um, and I think it's enticed me to be more interested in it. So I think that's sort of what's given me the courage to pursue it a little bit more. Um, I love it there. It's wonderful. I've been there for two years and um, they've been really flexible with me and allowed me to tour and do my thing and, and continue to, to work there as well. And um, it's just like a family. It's a small community restaurant and um, it's great. This is more on a personal level, but it's like its own little family in itself. Like the way it's not a corporate business like a boss would be, but it's, he's, we call him Uncle Harold <laughs> in the sense that we just feel like a family. And for me, it's been nice to have to get to know the people, especially in the music scene. So it's really helped me. And I think it does, people that come in, we all have like the same type of attitude towards appreciation for live music and for this type of local, because he tries to like get all his food locally and, and stuff like that. So I think just the whole idea is really nice. It's a hidden gem because people don't really know about it, but once they find out, usually we have regulars that, like once they're here, once they find out about it, they'll come back. It's a really nice combination of um, artists that perform at the Blue Chair. Sometimes the people are really big names of Canadian music. Uh, sometimes they're, you know, people that have won Junos and are nominated for Junos and people that have serious careers going on play at the Blue Chair. And so to be a local person that gets to play there, um, it makes me feel kind of like it's a big deal, you know? Focus is, when there's music there, the focus is on the music. And you hear players come from, players will tra be traveling through and, like, you know, Lenny Gallant and was just here or, and they're completely blown away by how, what a great venue it is because it focuses on music and it focuses on accommodating musicians and their music and, and customers who want to listen to music, you know, it focuses on them. There's a lot of people that don't even know that it's there and I, I'm always surprised when I speak to people and they say, where are you performing? And oh, I just happen to be at the Blue Chair and they have no idea where it is. And then when they go, I always see them again and they said, oh, I was just back at the Blue Chair. I think it's why people would choose coming here over other dining places like and then they realize that the food is exceptional but I think what sort of draws them in at first is the idea that it's different you get to have a show and have the meal um, without it being too big. A lot of times people come in just for dinner and are just there for food and they're pleasantly surprised to hear about hear about the live music that's happening and so a lot of times the neat thing about melding the restaurant and the live music together is that a lot of times people don't necessarily go out to see live music and they just happen to stumble upon the blue chair for a good meal and those two worlds meet and and they really like it we have a lot of regulars who come back and love that experience uh, Harold has done a really good job of uh, identifying a niche for himself within the roots music genre and uh, he's established it with really good entertainment so you get a lot of people who are blue chair regulars they're music enthusiasts and they can go there and they know they're going to get a really good solid night of good music so they're 
he has their trust from years as attendees and his growing audiences uh, now trust him because he presents uh, high quality entertainment. Actually, we were eating at the High Level Diner and uh, in one of the newspapers, um, one of the food newspapers there, we were looking through and we saw the Blue Chair Cafe and we saw that there was live music. So we thought, hmm, maybe we'll go and have dessert over there. So we off we went to the Blue Chair Cafe and we had uh, they had chocolate uh, and we had a glass of wine and there was live music and we fell in love with the place. With the new design, um, there was sort of, there's a lower area at the front and then there's a slightly raised platform area at the back. But you're, you're very close, you, to make eye contact with each other and the kinds of, um, the kind of to and fro between the artists and the audience is, it's, it's quite, uh, it's like, um, it's like friends, yeah, it, um, yeah. So it's a, it's a really nice um, relationship that you have with the performers. I think the blue chair has evolved into one of Edmonton's most important venues. It's really difficult in a, such a glutted marketplace with a ton of venues and a ton of restaurants to do something to separate yourself from the rest of the pack, and Harold has managed to do that. There's always the conundrum of, you know, is it a live music venue that serves food or is it a restaurant that has live music? And he's managed to do both uh, successfully. It's a great evening. Whenever we go, it's we want to just relax and, and just uh, have an evening of good food and entertainment. Uh, and we're, we're really glad that our city has, has uh, venues like the Blue Chair. Harold really filled a hole in the scene here for good local and touring musicians and it's really become a really important venue. We, we keep going back because, because it's easy to do. Um, we know it's not going to be too loud, we know the music is going to be really high quality, that the food is going to be really good, they've got an interesting and varied menu and um, we're not going to be tired when we've left. Uh, we're, we're just going to go home smiling and just um, enjoy, take the feeling with you.